Hello guys and welcome back to Resident Evil 7. Did you hear? And today we're going to be having a look at the boss fight with Jack in the boathouse. So, what we're looking at here now is an extraction of uh, some footage from my live broadcast of the event. Thus, <laughs> that echo you hear in the background is me panicking, but this is my second attempt. It only took me two. So, the first thing I'll say is this boss is badass As in terms of how Jack goes. Um, yeah, this was great. I got a bit of help from my friends, of course, the guys uh, we had a few people jump in and out as I was making these attempts and uh, were kind enough to leave me some tips and whatnot. And the basic concept of the boss fight is Jack, we'll give him a new name as soon as I can think of one, but he's still Jack. He's got all these eyeballs all over his body. And naturally enough, you want to um, well, shoot them and destroy them, for lack of a better phrase or terminology. Easier said than done. What I found was most effective was my two-barrel shotgun. Or, I'd imagine the, f the, uh, the four-shot. The, the regular shotgun you start off with that has four in the chamber would be useful as well, but it doesn't matter. I found the shotgun, two shots per eye. Um, whenever I could, I would get some distance and pop away with the handgun, but I found the shotgun was most effective. What I brought into the fight was my handgun, my shotgun, and the flamethrower. I did not bring the grenade launcher. And I found the flamethrower was pretty useless. So, really you want to kind of just focus on them with the shotgun. There we go, right there you just seen I took uh, an eye out. And you want to play hit and run. That's what I'm going to call the game. Uh, you, you get close to your target, you spot an eye that you want to take out, you take it out, and you continue running. Get, a, get away from him, get your bearings, pick out your next target, take your time, and then move in and do that exact same thing again. In this example, even though there was an eye showing because my health is an issue, and I wanted to get out of there, I climbed the ladder and I took another target, which is this one. So, if you're heading into this fight and you're looking at this video as a kind of a guide or a tutorial, you don't need to overburden yourself with weapons. What you do want is you do want shotgun ammo and your shotgun. The handgun is quite handy as well. What I found for breaking these crates later uh, in this fight is rather than running up to the crate and then breaking it with my knife, to shoot it with my handgun is approaching, to speed things up. I don't want to be stood anywhere for too long at any one point. Um, going back on the guns, so yeah. I found I had no use whatsoever for the flamethrower slash burner thing. I didn't bring my grenade launcher in, and I found I didn't need it. I definitely, definitely needed the shotgun, and the handguns just have handy to have. So all the rest of the room that you have spare, what you want to do there is put in as many health items as you can. That's where those will go, because you might be healing quite a bit. This version of Jack has an amazing uh, range so it's kind of handy that it's on two levels so you never really want to be on the same level as him because his reach is just going to get you and what I worked out is three direct hits from him will uh, result in your annihilation in addition to that later in the fight he also um, starts projectile vomiting on top of everything else so it's quite handy not to be on the same level as him, unless you have to. When I had to be on the same level as him, I would make it the top floor. So I could run past him, pop an eye, and then jump back down again. So that's kind of what I was going for there. Now, he has eyes all over his body, and some of them aren't as obvious. Like, when you look down when he's on the bottom floor... Oh, that was a nice shot there. Another one, another one. Oh, we popped the one on the tail. When you're looking down on him, it's quite easy to kind of pop some off with the handgun whenever you get an opportunity to. But underneath his body, he's going to have some that aren't so obvious, that aren't so apparent, if you were on the bottom floor with him. Ooh, look at that for a shot. I'm on fire in this run. So sometimes, to get the ones underneath his body, to be mindful of those, 
you need to get him up on the top floor here and then you need to jump down to the bottom and keep an eye out for them there's one that got me i found quite quite tricky towards the end of this encounter that you're going to see shortly enough Take credit for that, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't me. He's getting faster now. One thing I did note here is as the, oh, here's the projectile okay. vomiting. That's there it is. Now he's vomit projectiles. Projectile vomit projectiles. That's gonna get you. Yeah, so one thing I noted here is he does he has picked up the pace slightly in terms of how fast he can move up and down. But it to be honest, it didn't phase me too much once I realized it had occurred, and I took that into account. Then, oh, there we go, got another one. Then it didn't phase me too much. So he still has an eye up. He still has one remaining in this battle. Now he's sounding like himself, isn't he? Now try as I might, from this angle, I just and cannot see. spot the eye. Another this time. is where I struggle the most. I don't say struggle in terms of, you know, I wasn't struggling too much with health or with the difficulty of the battle, but more getting at that last eye, which was on his, un which was, I'm going to say, on his undercarriage. <laughs> So doing pretty much everything I can there to try and, there you go, that's I think the better approach to busting those boxes. I'm trying to do everything I could to expose, there it is again, to expose that eye, which is tricky to get at, there we go, but, oh see there's another one. Why did I climb up? You're probably asking yourself. Yeah, there's still an eye up. Funny. Still in just an That's awkward position as the last. But yeah, I was tr trying to get him to expose it, but you also risk the chance when you're standing there, like popping him, trying to get him to move a little bit to expose that eye. You run the risk of, um, well, taking a slap off him at worst, or at best, I guess, or projectile vomiting at worst. <laughs> oh, the irony. I love how he shouts like that. Ethan! I can't do it. Ethan! Nah, I can't do it. I can't be as freaky as he is. So, yeah. 
the majority of this bass this boss battle for me is trying to get that that eye if i had been if i had approached this battle differently or if circumstances had been different and i managed to take off take out the eyes in his undercarriage or on his undercarriage in earlier stages this boss battle would have been over really quickly but it's just the way they were awkwardly positioned I could never really get him lined up properly to take that shot so that's kind of my game plan here right now I'm trying to get him to come up so I can jump down so I can kind of move around and see if I can kind of ah, there we go we're kind of sidestepping the projectile vomiting there while I survey for that eye as best I can but yeah I want him to come up so I can jump down so I can continue to survey for the eye and give it a pop here and there whenever possible no there's still a whoever wrote now you need to shoot him in the head uh, there's still an eye up that we spotted I just can't seem to get to it yet um, just in the background there, I'm just um, replying to the people who were nice enough to um, well to stay with me during this fight. I hate playing Resident Evil on my own, so I always feel good when I broadcast that. Um, I know there's people right there with me, and some are kind enough, those who have already done it already, to kind of help me along. Oh, look, I missed it. I finally get the opportunity, and I missed the damn thing. I felt really bad after that. Not only that, I took some projectile vomiting there. I didn't have another health item. And I thought, oh, this is it now. This is going to be over. I had the eye in sight. I hit it with two shots. And I'm going to have to start all over again. But I would not put you, the viewer, through that. So that's not what's going to happen here. So he's no sooner been up and I've no sooner started surveying him and he's come back down again. So I'm going straight back up. As you can see, I cannot afford to take a slap from him in any way, shape, form or fashion. So I am on the hunt for healing items of any type. I'm forced to go this way. <laughs> And we have a health item, so I'm back in the game, getting kind of close to it now. So this, of course, if I was to do this fight again, I think I'd be able to do it a lot quicker. The essentials, to recap, when you come into the fight, you definitely want your shotgun with as many shells as you can carry. Um, you want the handgun for certain. You really do not need the flamethrower or the grenade launcher. You can leave those in the box. And you can take as many health items as possible there we go he got that eye and once you head in his boss is full of eyes you want to take out all the eyes in a hit and run fashion to take the least amount of damage possible so once you've hit all the eyes you no longer have access to the ladders he goes under he comes up this is all of course a cutscene and you have no control until now there's one eye left it appears on the head you want to take it down I think it took me four shots There it is. Took me four. Four shots and he's down. Oh boy. Now he's got to get up one last time. Again, it's more part of a cutscene thing where you have to push the X button. And the X button will kill him. At the cost of one of the um, inoculations that you've created. You created two inoculations. One for each of the, the lassies there. But you're forced to use one on him here now unfortunately and that leaves one here we go and that leaves one for one of the two lassies you have a tough choice ahead of you but I believe I hope I pray that this is the final blow for Jack I really hope it is 
and away we go. You're faced with a very difficult decision, and I wish you all the best in making that decision. And I would be very interested to hear what decision you made and how it turns out for you in the end. Anyway, I hope this guide proves some bit useful to you. Sorry it took a little longer than normal, but I thought it's better you see the mistakes I made so you don't make them. If you like this video, please do hit that like button and like this video. The subscribe button's in the center of your screen. It's a picture of my avatar. If you just want to hit that and click subscribe, it would be much appreciated and you would certainly be helping me grow my channel. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, all the best.